It is Sunday, April 3rd in the NBA, and I'm back with my three best picks of the day. Yo, what's going on, everyone? This is Austin from Calling Our Shot. Let's do a short recap from yesterday, an 0-2 day. Joel Embiid doesn't play a minute in the fourth quarter, although he would have hit his over if he did, as it was a blowout. And then Mitchell Robinson, but he was waking up this morning with sore legs, because he was doing a lot of cardio yesterday, not a lot of production. But either way, still 16-5 and five over our last six days. Let's have a great start to this upcoming week. Let's have a great end to the regular season as we move on into the playoffs. Now, weekend NBA betting can be extremely 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 tough, so I have to encourage you guys to manage that bankroll. If you lost some money yesterday, no reason to force too much today. It is hard to bet the NBA this late into the season, but either way, we're going to keep going into it. we got a lot of games on today, starting at 1 p.m. Eastern time, all the way until I believe the last game starts at, I believe, 9.30. So either way, if you are new to the Call on Our Shot channel, we appreciate you for joining, joining us. If you want to hit that subscribe button down below, we certainly would appreciate it. I think we're about 370 subscribers away from 30K, so that would be awesome if we can hit that soon. We really can't do it without you, so hit that subscribe button. Button, click that like button to all the OGs out there. And again, shout out to our COS All-Stars. It's our YouTube membership. It helps support the channel. And we appreciate all of them out there. It only costs $2.99 a month. Help support us and you get some cool extra perks like getting our plays an hour early. That's even going to be earlier coming uh, up on Thursday with baseball starting soon. We'll have a little bit of a change to different things. But either way, if you want to support us, click the join button on the channel, the link in the description or the link in the pinned comment. We would really appreciate it. Shout out again to our newest COS All-Stars, Lazy Purple Yellow Vikings. Welcome Welcome back, Ryan, Reginald, uh, Robert, D. Salinas, Dale, Jason, Jai, hopefully I pronounced that right, and Chris, we appreciate you all for supporting us. We really can't do it without you guys. So if you want to become a COS All-Star, consider hitting that join button on the channel or the link in the description or pinned comment. Thank you guys again for all supporting the Call on Our Shot community. Now, let's get right into it. Waste no more time. Let's get into my best of the day. We're starting with the man on my shirt. The Greek freak, Giannis Antetokounmpo. We're taking this over, 30 and a half points, minus 108 on FanDuel. Now, this is an early tip-off, 1 p.m. Eastern time on ABC, and there's no better way to start the day. You wake up and you place a bet on Mr. Giannis, and look, the Greek freak, He's turned it on as of late as he's gearing up to defend his NBA championship from last year. And the last two games, he's played 38 and 39 minutes, scoring 40 and 44 points along the way. And like I said, it's been an absolute beast, and I expect that to continue today on ABC against the Mavericks. The Bucks currently set as five-point favorites over under 228 points. And I'm going to be honest... I don't know how the Mavs are going to stop Giannis. Now, it is a fun narrative that Jason Kidd, the ex-coach of the Milwaukee Bucks, kind of helped turn Giannis into the player he is today. Obviously, he hasn't coached him for a while, five, six years. I don't really know how long Budenholzer's been there. But still, he helped develop Giannis, and now Giannis is coming right back after him. Now, either way, I don't really think that gives Giannis a big edge, although it is a fun narrative. Now, Giannis has not played the Mavericks this season, but his last three against them, 31, 34, and 48 points. The 31 was the most recent. It was last January, January 2021. That was the game that Giannis out one for 10 from the free throw line. So I don't think he's going to shoot one for 10. He's like a 70% free throw shooter. So he left some points out there on the line, but either way, he's going to shoot a little bit better today. Now, Giannis, what we also like is he is at home because this is a guy that he was dropping those 40 bombs on the road against the Sixers and the Nets, but he's back at home where he averages 31.3 points per game this season compared to just only 29 on the road. Now, my final note is that what I love betting on Giannis is that he plays a lot of minutes against the bench units, and while the Mavs not, don't necessarily have the best bench in the NBA, they like to play Giannis the first five to six minutes, and they rest him for a couple minutes, and then they bring him in with the bench units, and he's just going to town against the, uh, the guy, against the backups. And so that's why you see Giannis average a lot of points. He might start slow, but you just see him build on it. And you saw him last game against the Nets when he scored 17 straight points at the beginning of the fourth quarter. He was against all the bench scrubs. So either way, I like the Bucks to continue to try here. They probably will play Giannis' normal minutes, maybe even a little bit more today as the Bucks are still trying to grind up to that number one seed in the Eastern Conference. I believe one or two games behind the Heat for that one. So plus you look at stars, they usually show up on ABC. This is a 1 p.m. Eastern tip-off. I'm counting on the Greek Freak to get to show up for us. And as always, we say today, I would say tonight, but really this afternoon, we're getting Greek Freaky. So let's keep moving on to another guy we love here. Damian Jones, over 23 and a half PRAs, minus 111 on FanDuel. He made a lot of people believers, and if you don't know who he is, I'll allow you, I'll let me introduce you to him. He's the starting center for the Sacramento Kings, as they will be without DeMontis Sabonis, Rashawn Holmes. I don't even care if Alex Lynn is active today. It won't matter. Now, Jones cashed out for us. We took his bets, oh, the same exact bet, I believe it was 22 and a half, although the line did go up to 23 and a half. We took it on Friday. He treated us to 17 points and 17 rebounds, easily hitting this over. And granted, that was against the Rockets, and he had destroyed them for 38 PRAs the previous game against them. 
Today's matchup against the Warriors, still pretty solid because the Warriors aren't really a team that's really been defending centers all that well. Now, the biggest encouragement, though, I've seen from Damian is that he's played 34 and 31 minutes his last two games, and that's awesome because if we can get that against Golden State, I think he has a good chance of hitting this. Now, Damian is also playing for a contract extension this offseason. He is a free agent, unrestricted, so he can go wherever he wants. So these final games are important for him, and not only determining his future, but seeing how much money he can get paid this offseason. And look, if he can show that he can beat up on some good teams, and I think he'll have a pretty good chance at, you know, getting a better, bigger contract this offseason. But either way, over the last 30 games, Warriors allowed the fourth most points per game to centers. They're kind of middle of the pack in terms of rebounds, and then the fifth most assists per game to centers. Now, I won't, don't be betting Damian Jones assists. I don't expect him to go out there and drop five assists on him, but still. Now we look at center's game log against them. We look at a guy like Rudy Gobert yesterday. He was one of our leans over 13 and a half rebounds. He had 14 points and 20 rebounds easily cashed in this. Now DeAndre Ayton a couple games ago, 16 points, 16 rebounds. He didn't even shoot well from the field. Clint Capella, 19 points, 13 rebounds. Bam Adebayo, 25, nine and four assists. Wendell Carter Jr., 19 points and eight rebounds. By the way, those have all been since March 22nd. I think Mr. Damian Jones can get it done for us. Now, like I said, he did he did play them back on February 3rd when he wasn't really starting for this team. He did have 17 points, four rebounds, and five assists on for 26 PRAs in 24 minutes. And so I think he can get it done. That was when he was coming off the bench. And I think he can get this done if he's getting 30 plus minutes tonight. Over the last two games, he's averaged 22 and a half rebound chances, by far the most on the Sacramento Kings. And while I know he's not necessarily playing the Houston Rockets today, still do think he will keep continue that momentum and make the people believers. Once again, he's a call on our shop fan and we love Love him. So we're going to count on Damian Jones over 23 and a half PRAs on Sunday night. And moving on to my final play of the day. It's another one we're running back from Friday. It's Fred Van Vliet over 16 and a half points, minus 110 on FanDuel. I'll be the first to admit, I won't allow this. I won't allow the disrespect. Now, Fred Van Vliet, I will also be the first to admit, Fred Van Vliet is in a bit of a slump at the moment. And while I don't necessarily expect that slump to continue the rest of the year, I do think that this number is still disrespectful. Now, Fred Van Vliet is averaging 20.3 points per game this season. That goes up to 20.9 points per game at home, which is where they are today. And today they are taking on the Heat. And I know that Heat have this reputation of being this defense you want to avoid at all costs. But that's normally for guys and centers. Like we talked about Vucevic yesterday. We talked about his under and PRA, so he didn't end up cashing that. But still, this is a team that necessarily isn't the best at defending opposing guards. They like to give up a lot of three-pointers. And Van Vliet, that's basically all he chucks up is a ton of threes and no better time to get out of your slump than against your ex-teammate, Kyle Lowry, who should be active today despite them being on a back-to-back. -back. Now, look, his Van Vliet's last three games, he hasn't been scared to shoot the ball. It's not like he's scared. He's shot 13, 15, and then 19 field goal attempts his last three, a large majority of those coming from three. Last game we took his over. He scored 19 points cash in the over force and was seven, on nine, seven for 19 shooting, five for 16 from three. He played terribly, but he still cashed his over for us, and that's what we're asking for today. The volume is great, and despite not shooting well, I have faith in Van Vliet's capability. He's still a guy that's going to shoot 38% from three in his career. And right in the past couple games, he's been right hovering around 30%. So I think he gets it going today. Now look, he's the 13 plus field goal attempts in three straight games is awesome. And Van Vliet's last 25 games with 13 plus field goal attempts, he's hit the over in 21 of those 25 games. Now you could say two of the four unders were in the past most recent games, but I don't really have to put a lot of faith into that. I think Van Vliet bounces back today. Or he keeps shooting at a ton and hits his over based solely on volume. Look, he has scored 22, 19, and 20 point, 21 points this season against the Miami Heat, hitting the over in all three games. And the Raptors are trying to win each and every game. Nick Nurse, just like Tom Thibodeau, runs his players into the ground. He's going to keep running Van Vliet into the ground. So I'll give you my most final, most useless fact of the day. Van Vliet hit this over in 10 of his last 11 games on Sunday. Oh, wouldn't you look at the day? It is Sunday. And while I'm not putting that into account, I do think Van Vliet's going to hit this over 16 and a half points. I think he gets closer to 19 to 20, kind of like what he did for us a couple days ago. So that's going to wrap it up. That's my third official play. I think Van Vliet gets that over 16 and a half points. We'll be counting on him. Now, I could give you a spread lean. I'd pick the Pacers minus two and a half, but it's a spread lean. I don't want to bet spreads this late into the season. We'll probably bet some more in the, in the postseason, but... The pace, the Pistons, they're taking on the Pistons. They're tanking about as hard as you possibly can, benching their guys right after the first quarter. And while they probably are going to get a little bit in a, get in a little bit of trouble, I still do think the Pacers could win this game. But I'm not putting any money on that. Just the lean. My three official plays will be Van Vliet over 16 and a half points, Damian Jones over 23 and a half PRAs, and Giannis, the Greek freak, over 30 and a half points. Those are my three. Now I will have my NCAA tournament 
video for Kansas versus UNC that we'll post it later tonight. We'll just be doing it for fun. You don't have to take my college basketball bets. I'm not good at college basketball. Purely doing it just for fun. And I think we're like 0-5 in our last five college basketball picks. We're just doing it for the content, doing it for the people. But that will be live later tonight. So definitely check it out. I'd appreciate it. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.